Okay, today we're going to talk about the differences between having what we call a traditional RAID card for working your hard drives and versus a, an HBA disk controller card. And is there really an advantage? Well, to answer that question, we're going to tackle it today. Well, today, as you can see, we have a variety of different platforms out there. And these platforms allow us to do quite a bit of entourage designing, implementation, also large scale disk management. Large scale disk management basically means that you have some type of a baseline service out there and that you're using high capacity storage arrays along with their heads to basically meet a need such as a NAS, uh, such as an IP device interface, such as an Isilon here, which I can't open right now to a standalone environment that has 24 disks in it to a distributed environment which is basically like a NetApp or a EMC platform and of course there are also alterations out there that exist that you can do. The key detail here is how best to handle your disks. Do you do them in RAID groups at the hardware level such as these RAID controllers, these 8 series controllers from HP or the, or the P4 series or do you pursue the HBA controller interface that basically assigns each individual disk as a standalone or you call RAID 0 disk and then you allow software to manage the combining of the disks in different formats that you want to see. Now, I have done all four formats. I've done Enterprise RAID, I've done Standalone RAID, I've done Standalone Disk, and I've done HBA. Those are the four standings. Enterprise RAIDs are high-end. They have battery power in them. They're able to sustain the systems just long enough to write all the data, and it has no dependency on any operating system whatsoever. You can use the operating system to interact with it with the RAID controller, no problem. But hardware does the work, and you can communicate on the RAID bus for logic and log information to understand how well this card is doing. So here you've got the PMC series, SXPs, the 2400 series chipsets, which are active here, and or you have what's called a non-enterprise level RAID controller, and in this case, this is the series P4, and this is a great little card as well. I'll pre put more information out on it. Great little um, LSI logic RAID controller, and it's just basically a one host controller doing one job. Um, and it would usually run between somewhere between 2 to maybe 12 disks. Then there is the HBA variant of this. And by the way, these can become HBA based as well. All you're doing is you're formulating a single RAID configuration per device, but the difference between HBA controller and these RAID controllers is they still use the RAID protocol for communication logs. Controllers hand that over to the operating system for HBAs, which is slightly different. So. What was the end result? I first used a series of Dell uh, 720DX here, I'm sorry, XD platform here, and I basically took these disks, put them in a RAID group, and set these disks up as HBAs only. And I did a comparison test. Um, the RAID group's functional communication and recovery was pretty seamless, but the HBAs did have an individual faster rate of access in write times but when they're regrouped into free NAS or MediaVault uh, OS configurations, those performance markers were brought down to match that of the RAID group. There was communication based on smart interfacing to talk to the individual drives, but not as a group, only as disks, as individual HBA targets. This on the RAID side, no issues, generic report log. The only problem is, is that when you're in these kind of configurations, they're bias-based builds, but if you build them with your proper failover redundancy, that doesn't matter because your system will work just fine. Then you can set up a time to replace a bad disk, and it will regenerate on the fly. You don't have to have a GUI or, or a CLI command line to interact with it, but you can if you go up to Dell and download the CLI Linux-based command line to look at the log settings for this. So complexity-wise, they're both equally complex. Result-wise, the HBA set is easier to understand than RAID, but RAID far outperforms the HBA set. Um, anything you do here, you have to manually set 
here you set in the configuration. Now, in a Isilon environment, or basically an EMC model, they basically treat each and every device in a container of sorts, always tagging two disks for backups for failover and RAID 6, or dual parity in this case with EMC. With NetApp, they call it uh, RAID 6. So the end result is when you flip the EMC over to a standard operating system and use what they already have in the, in the, the Isilon, which is an HBA node interface, it comes up ready to go. It cannot do RAID. It can only do HBA until it hits the Isilon OS. Then the RAID component steps in and begins to take over. That's why the Isilon is similar to the NetApp in that regard. With that being said, when you look at Dell's, as you can see down here, RAID, HBA, HBA hybrid RAID right here, you are actually able to isolate them, but the only way you can isolate them, and this is important, with RAID controllers and with HBA controllers, is unlike a traditional HP chassis, this is a single bus right here, and this is another single bus right here. Down here we have a single bus, a single bus, a single bus, a single bus. So you can type class in a single chassis different bandwidths based on the performances of the disks in the HBA array configurations. So with that being said, very flexible chassis if this is all you need and you want to play with storage. You can go high end, which is RAID. Um, you can go uh, mid-tier. Or you can go in a very complex format with multiple terabyte drives here for your main storage, your media transfers, and this, and this is all on a 10 gig network. And you're seeing great performance on your high-end stuff while your 7200 RPM HBAs down here are acting as your archives. And at that point stage, you're in a really great shape. So the end result, well, the truth is, Setting up HBA card RAID controllers has been around for a very long time. It's just a new title in regards to what we used to call RAID 0. These cards have, RAID card wise, are really excellent high performance. They're super cheap. They can get them for $15, $20, $30. This card right here is probably one of the better ones because it has no battery expansion effect, which basically means these batteries will run dry over time. But these cards, the 800 series cards, can do mini SAS outputs, which can connect up any type of disk tray you buy that's got SAS and mini and as SAS interfaces on one side and go mini SAS on the other via, via a gender class change of types of connections, i.e., in this case, SAS and mini SAS. So, with that being said, unlike the internal, like you saw with the Dell. You can use the PERC controllers to set up the Dell in accordance to what you want to do. And for the HP side, or for the Dell, you can use these in, in, in the Dell as well. Put one of these guys in your, your chassis, plug it up into your, uh, let's say, uh, 4226 or any of the series, big 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch disc shelves, and then you bring them back in as HBAs or as RAID, and you're in great shape. Uh, yeah, these cards will be both. They can do both. They can set up 48 RAID 0 disks with no value, or they can be full-blown RAID. So I always favor to RAID because the way RAID works in general and its autonomous nature still outperforms considerably that of common operating systems. Not that I don't doubt them because I use FreeNAS myself, but I use it in a double redundancy model. Uh, without the extra configuration requirements that I would need to do to build it in FreeNAS itself. So that's my two cents. I do gravitate to the RAID controllers. I like them. They're cheap. Um, they're fast. They can do a lot. They've been around for a long time. It's proven technology. HBA controllers are okay, but they're just reprints of the older technology. And they're also lesser scale because they want you to buy a higher dollar value to get to the performance levels that you want in caching and so on. When in actuality, in some of these RAID cards, all you have to do is stick in a couple of SSD drives and they'll cache buffer for you for free on all your disks. But well, that's it for today. I'll let you guys go. Bye.